In this video, let's take a look at a common scenario when it comes to data fetching, which is pagination. To be honest, now that you've learned about the different options with use query, pagination is not difficult to implement. However, there is one option which improves the user experience, which is what we are here to learn about. Now to help us understand pagination with React Query, I have once again set up some code. Let me walk you through the changes. In db.json, I've added a new entry called colors, which is an array of eight objects. Each object has an ID and a label, which is the name of a color. Pretty simple. To display the list of colors, in the components folder, I've created a file called paginatedqueries.page.js. Within the file, we have the data fetching logic using React Query and a component to render the fetched list of colors. We have useQuery and Axios at the top and the fetcher function which makes a request to slash colors. Within the component, we have use query with colors as the query key and fetch colors as the function. We destructure different values like is loading, is error, data, and use them to render either the loading text, the error message, or the list of colors. This component is included in app.js under the path rq-paginated. If we head to the browser and navigate to localhost 3000 slash rq hyphen paginated, you can see the list of eight colors being displayed. Our goal now is to paginate this list of eight colors, displaying only two per page. Let's learn how to do that. The first thing you should know is that JSON server supports pagination. All we have to do is provide query parameters. Right now, localhost 4000 slash colors will give us all the eight colors. If we add question mark underscore limit is equal to two, it gives us only two colors at a time. If we add ampersand underscore page is equal to one. It gives us the first page. Page is equal to two, gives us the second page. Similarly, page is equal to three and page is equal to four. We need to use these query parameters to implement pagination in our component. Let's go back to VS Code and do that. Step one, we need to maintain a state variable for the page number. So at the top, import use state from React. Within the component, call use state, and the state variable is going to be page number. The setter function is going to be set page number and the initial value is going to be one. So we will be viewing the first page by default. Step two, we utilize this page number to create unique queries. So let's pass it in as the query key. Instead of a string, it is now an array, colors, comma, page number. We also pass the same into the query function. So arrow function and two fetch colors, we pass in page number. The fetcher function now receives page number as a parameter. And for the query URL, we're going to add question mark. Limit is going to be equal to two since that is the desired page size for this example. And we're going to set page is equal to the passed in page number. That completes our step two. For the third and final step, 
we add the next and previous buttons that change the page number. So after the div tag, we're going to add another div tag. We're going to add two buttons for previous page and next page. The first button is going to be previous page. On click is going to be equal to set page number. We get hold of the previous page and increment it, sorry, decrement it by one. The button is also going to be disabled if page number is equal to one. I'm going to make a copy of this, change previous page label to next page. On click, we increment the page number and disabled if page number is equal to four. Now ideally, your API dictates if there are more pages which can be used. We just have four pages, which is why I've disabled at page number is equal to four. If we now save the file and head back to the browser, refresh, and you can see we only have two colors being displayed. I'm going to throttle the network speed again and click on next page. We see the loading text and then the next two colors. Similarly, page three and page four. Our pagination works as expected. And you can see it wasn't that difficult to implement. However, there is room for improvement. Currently, the UI jumps in and out of the success and loading states because each new page is treated like a brand new query. Loading and then the data. To overcome this, React Query provides an option called Keep Previous Data. So on our use query hook, if we specify Keep Previous Data and set it to True, React Query will maintain the data from the last successful fetch while the new data is being requested, even though the query key has changed. And when the new data arrives, the previous data is seamlessly swapped to show the new data. And in this case, you can use the ease fetching flag to show a loading indicator if you wish to. I am just going to add some text at the bottom. Ease fetching and show the text loading. All right, let's save the file and test it out. I'm going to refresh and now, if I click on the next page, you can see the previous data is still present while the new data is being fetched in the background. Once the data is fetched, old data is swapped out and new data is swapped in. This might not seem like a big difference right now, but if you have a table or 20 rows of data, layout shift is pretty bad. You can overcome it using keep previous data option. So that is about pagination with React Query. In the next video, let's take a look at infinite queries. Thank you for watching. And if you're finding the videos helpful, please do leave a like as it helps reach more people in the community. I'll see you in the next video.